Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another Will It Run style video. This is actually my friend's 1969 Cadillac. I'm gonna help him get it running. Uh, this car was actually in storage for the last 15 years. Uh, this father had it and he died and he gave it to his son. His son wanted nothing to do with this car. He was not interested in it at all. His son gave it to this place in Tucson called Crown's Concepts. They're a hot rod shop in Tucson. They do classic car storage and high-end builds and things like that. Well, they didn't want the car. Well, my friend Chris, he works for them. He does all their social media. He puts their cars up for sale. He handles their Facebook, Instagram, TikTok page, all that. And so they said, hey, Chris, uh, do you want the car? And he said, well, of course I want the car. So he got this car for free, which is, I mean, awesome. I mean, you never hear of stuff like that. So let's take a look around the car. Let's see what we're working with, and we'll see if we can get it running and driving. So first thing right off the bat, this thing looks absolutely complete. Look at those headlights. Everything is there. Look at the chrome. I mean, it's just beautiful. I love these old big chrome bumpers all the way. So beautiful. Look at the grill. And something to remember, this is a survivor car. This car hasn't been painted. This car hasn't had a new motor put in it. This car is all original down to the hubcaps. Look how straight it is. Look at that. Gosh, look at that hood. It's a mile long. I absolutely love that. All the lenses, look at that. It's just awesome. I love it. We got a little bit of vinyl top damage right here, but that's to be expected. Got a little bit more right here. It's not a big deal though. I mean, I mean, what can you ask for? It's, you know, 50, 60 years old. Look at those hubcaps and those white walls. Man, that is so fresh. I absolutely love this car. Got a little bit of paint damage right here. It's not too big of a deal. So this car was registered in New York. Uh, the last time it was registered, I think, was 2008. That's when the dad quit driving it. And then his dad and his son moved out to Scottsdale and they had the car shipped out to Scottsdale where it was a uh, garage for the last 15 years. I always thought those back windshields were crazy, how they had that V right there, that line right there in the glass, and it extends all the way down the trunk. I always thought that was pretty crazy. But look at this, no rust, absolutely nothing down the side. Let's take a look underneath it real quick. Oh, look at that, that is so clean. Clean bean. Hey Chris, yeah. you wanna open up the trunk? All right, here's Chris, everybody. All right. It's got that smell to it, huh? Yeah. I love that smell. It's all there. It's even got the spare tire in it. Dual white wall? It's like two? Yeah. It's like two lines? Yep. It's gotta be the original spare too. Yeah. It probably like is. The tire. Power cushion. <laughs> load range B. You know, they have date codes on these tires. Oh, really? Yeah, like they have date codes on them, and if you actually, it might be here where you can see it, but yeah. like somewhere around there, like there'll be like a date Maybe. code on the tire. This is a picture on the cover there. Puncture seal. Is that a Cadillac in the picture? It might be. Seals and inflates tube and tubeless tires in seconds. It's like, um, was that stuff they sell now? Green, that yeah, green, like green slime. That green slime? Yeah, this is like pre green slime. See, what is this? Well, it's, it's got a. It's just like a vent system, like an auxiliary like vent. It's, I think that's supposed to connect it. It's supposed to be connected there. See how it like swings up? Oh, it's, yeah. I think it's supposed to be connected there. It's just this is loose right here. Uh huh. And then that goes in there. Oh, yeah, that's the holder. Yeah. But that's so bizarre. Is it? You think it's just a vent? Because obviously that. Oh, you know what? I bet it is, because that or defroster for the rear window. Actually, that's that might be the other option. It's like a clamp. Yeah. That is factory. I cannot believe those hoses are the first things to go. Yeah, they're in good condition. There. Yeah. Wow. I think it's from the because the cars from the East Coast and the interior stuff, like all the rubber and seals and stuff, are all like like you know what I mean? Like even this, it's not all hot and dry. And then I found out what this was: an auto leveling system for the rear suspension. Oh, so auto leveling? it gets like more weight on it, it, it pumps air into the air shocks in the rear. And this is the compressor for it. But they usually fail, which is why this one's been removed. Mm. So, fill it up with air here. Oh, you can manually do yeah. it? But that's the compressor that would have done it automatically. Right. When it senses that there's more weight in the back to keep the, the rear end high. To keep it level. Yeah. And there's no like replacement or like nobody really rebuilds these. So you can't like... You find like one that's working 
which is hard to do. Yeah, look at those seals. <laughs> They're actually pliable. Yeah, if this car sat in Arizona all its life, there's no way. Yeah. Like that would not be, it'd be done. Yeah. Look at this trunk lid. I mean, this is the factory paint, factory color, everything. Jacking instructions. It still has the original instructions for how to use the jack on the bumper, on the front bumper. Caution, do not get under car while jack is being used. You know, didn't they call these widow makers, these jacks? Yeah. Because they're very finicky. I have used them before, but rarely. They kind of stress me out. <laughs> it's cool that they actually used that in Eldorado in the photos of the, like in the cartoon photos or the drawings. Yeah, wow, that is so sweet. This thing is really, I mean, it's a true survivor. Let's check the gas tank in here. What was that? That old, I wonder if it smells. <laughs> you know, honestly, I don't smell much gas in there. Like, I doesn't smell, it doesn't smell real varnishy, so. Either they drained it out of gas or ran it out of gas because I don't smell a ton of gas. Usually if there's any, if that gas in there and it turns to varnish, it's, you can smell it. You know it's in there. You got your uh, wire coming up for your trunk light. You know, these, these old trunk lights, they had mercury switches. I've actually seen these before. They have a little vial full of mercury. And uh, when you lift up the trunk, the mercury flows to one side of the switch and that's what does it. Let's move to the inside. Listen to that. This thing is like so intact. I'm just like so amazed. I love it. I never get a hold of anything like this. <laughs> Every time I get a hold of something, it's been used and abused and caught in three fires. You can tell it's real leather by the way it cracks. Vinyl doesn't age like that. Really? No, vinyl doesn't age like this. And the headliner's intact too. There's no rips on it. Yeah, the headliner's there. Man, that's cool. Is that a mirror on there? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Courtesy lights up there for each of the rear passengers. So this actually had electric door locks. That's pretty sweet. Then you have your window controls and then window lockout. Is that for, uh, maybe that's for like the back windows? Yeah, so they can't use the back window. Yeah, it's like a kid safety lock type thing. And then right here, this is, oh, oh. Oh, I see. If you wanted to wash your windshield, you'd hit that and it would automatically start um, your wipers and put the uh, fluid on your windshield. I see, and then you could change your speed of your wipers. Okay, and then this is what they used to call a uh, remote mirror, isn't that funny? Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Oh yeah, you have a remote mirror, Chris. Yeah, that's Futuristic. It's kind of like flaking, glazing over, but it's still there. Door handles, a little bit of crackage right here, but you know. Oh well, of course, you got your ashtray with your lighter right there in the, uh, that's not even in bad shape. That guy must have not been a smoker, <laughs> whoever owned this, because usually people uh, back in the day, they used to put trash in here yeah. and, you know, not just cigarette butts, candy wrappers, gum wrappers, door handle. Look at these climate controls. Isn't it funny how they used to say you could set the temperature? I don't believe it actually set it to exact, but that's so sweet. Got that, you got your, uh, let's see, this is your, your air conditioning control vent? Yeah, it says oh. it's automatic, so basically I think you just put it on high or lower auto and then pick the temperature, and it switches uh, from AC to heat automatically. Rear defog, off and high. You know, I wonder if that is some kind of defroster. Maybe it just tried to blow air on it, I'm not yeah. sure, because it's not, I don't see how it's heated, but it does have rear defrosters. Let's get in here and check. Look at that. 21,763 original miles. And I believe it too, with the way this car is. I totally believe that. Look at the, uh, sometimes you can tell by the brake pedal how worn it is, you know, how, like, you know, if you've been hitting the brake pedal for a hundred and some thousand miles, it's worn out, but this brake pedal is almost perfect. Gas pedal. What is this? So that's like a security lockout. So don't push it in, because I don't have the key to that one. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna push that thing in. <laughs> I wonder what it locks out though. So I looked under the hood, a physical like lock that locks the hood. So you can't open the hood if that's engaged. You can't open the hood? If I can now, because uh -huh. it, it's not locked, but if you locked it, the hood would be like 
latched, clo like you couldn't, it was locked. But what did you say about a wire going to the There's distributor? There's also a wire to the distributor. I don't know what that does, probably like a cutoff switch. It something. probably makes it to where it won't have spark. Yeah. So it's like an anti-theft device, basically. Wow. So it cuts off the distributor and then locks the hood when it's engaged. In the streets of New York. Yeah. And the, get your whips <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The streets of New York, you don't want this thing touched, no. Uh, we got a, oh, FM? Okay. FM AM, yeah. Oh. Power antenna. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look how it switches the, yeah. I didn't even. Uh, oh, my gosh. I've never seen that. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, got your volume, got your tuner, look at that, how it just glides like butter. You know, usually, because inside here, this is driven by a cable, like these analog uh, radios, and what happens is, is the cables get hard and stuck, and so like, you'll turn the knob, and the dial won't want to move. So the fact that this moves like butter like that, is like so amazing. Got your clock. I'm so curious to see what comes on when you put a battery in it. Let's check out the glove box. Mm. Lock de lock de-icer? Oh, wow. You have your 69 Cadillac owner's manual. <laughs> oh my God, that is so cool. And you know, from the looks of it, I believe this is probably the original one. These are like, Mufflers, brakes, suspension. So these are some uh, records from when it was in New York. We'll put these back. I don't want to harm any of it, and we'll look through some of that more, maybe if we get this running. Got your clips here for what, your suits and stuff. GM, general safety, general motor seat belts. I guess this is when they started putting seat belts in. I, I want to say seat belts are required after 64 or 65. Yeah, yeah I think. Like if, if the car wasn't manufactured with seat belts, you don't have to have them, but after like 64 or 65, you have to have them. So it's kind of cool that this one has the original like GM sticker on the seat belt. That's pretty sweet. Let's uh, check under the hood here. Listen to that. Like a friggin' bank vault. <laughs> All right, you wanna do the honors? What size engine did this come with? A 390 or was it a? This one is a 472. 472? Yep. Niceness, this is what these are all from mesquite trees out here in Arizona. We have a lot of mesquite trees. I don't see any wires like broken or busted or chewed through. So these vacuum lines would shut and open doors in there to uh, change the flow of where your air was going. There's like diaphragms inside there. I have like a line going down them like right here and they're also color coded which definitely shows you these have never been changed and they're still pliable. Got the old A6 compressor. We got windshield washer fluid. We got power brakes, brake booster. Let's check the, uh... all right. We got power steering fluid. Looks a little dirty. They used to, they used to use ATF for everything. Smells a little bit like engine oil, but I know they didn't. It was supposed to be ATF, but it doesn't smell like ATF, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Got your belts on it, got your distributor, wires, going to your plugs. This is your ATF. Oh, wow, that's full. That's over full. Jeez. We'll have to check it when it's hot and in nitrality. Let's check the, uh, let's check the rad fluid. Oh, wee. <clears throat> I do see, oh yeah, dude, it's full. It's full of fluid. That's a good sign. Look at that original sticker. Warning, after draining, vented cap only. To tighten cap, fill completely to cap. Use a 15 pound cap. There it is, it says 15, right on it. See that? 15 pounds. How many pounds does it say to fill it with? Four, Four pounds. pounds. I, I think a new car is like one and a half, really? maybe two. Yeah, so four pounds is a lot. All right, first tool of the day. First tool of many. Okay. Let's check the engine oil. She's full, like over full. It's a little over full, honestly, but the oil, it looks good. Uh, it's kind of clear. It's not black, black. Look at all these, these plastics aren't busted. These hoses are still there. Wow, dude, you must be living right for the Lord <laughs> to have got this car. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally it pays off. All right, let's check the brake fluid real quick. Wow, 
Wow, brake fluid looks pretty good. It's a little bit dark, but it's not terrible. It's full. I got high confidence in this. I don't wanna put the cart before the horse, but it's looking pretty good. All right, what is this? Is this the, is this factory? It was there, but I'm not sure, because it looks like the old windshield washer, like, bottle bottles, but it has one of these, and like, obviously they were using plastic. Right? Is there no, so, is there no hose that goes to it or no anything? no hose, yeah, no. So I don't know if the owner put it in there. I wonder if someone in the comments, somebody in the comments will know what that is. So drop it down in the comments, what you think that is, or if you know what it is, because there's no hoses going to it. But look at these brackets. They look like they're really like factory mounted to the inner fender. So I'm very curious to know what that is. We'll try and turn in a full revolution. If it's not locked up, then we know we can put a, we can put a battery to it and see if it actually cranks. We wanna try and see if this thing is locked up or not. And it's got a fan clutch, so you can't grab the fan and you know, give it a good yank. You could do it from the alternator. I mean, that's it's possible, but I, I'd like to get on the actual crank. You guys watching will have to check up top. If you want, if you see the belts turning, you know that the motor's turning. I think I saw it turn a little bit. Yep, I saw it. Yeah. See it? Yep. 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 <sighs> Yep. She's turning. It's turning pretty good. Let's try and get her in a full circular motion. She's going. Yeah. Sweet. Um, is this the negative? Yeah. yeah, this goes down to the frame. This goes down into the dark abyss of the engine bay. So let's tap it. All right, we're not getting any sp spark on there, so nothing's grounded. Um, go in there and turn the key on into the on position. On position? Turn, is the radio on? Something's clicking in the dash, but I don't think, we're not getting much spark, so that means it's not like drawing tons of amps, so we're okay. Um, go ahead and go ahead and blip it. See if it cranks. Okay, try it again. Do it a little longer. Well, that sounds healthy. Do it, do it one more time. Okay, that sounds pretty good. They get in here and they really do a, a number. And That's a dead rat on that side. No way. Yeah, right there. Well, looky here. We found the guy that was making all that mess. Ugh. But you know what? Why didn't he eat any of these wires? Look, came in here, took a nap, and said peace. Hey there. Hello. I'm Irene. I'm the manager. Okay. Hey. Manager, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Is this something you? It looks like it's broken down for a while. No, we're about to get it running. Yeah. I do, really. Uh huh. Wow. Looks so old, like it doesn't couldn't run. Well, you'd be surprised. Okay. So part of the lease is you can't work on cars? Yeah, it'll be running. Like, it's pretty close. Wow, that's amazing. All right, just wanted to let you know. So I just 
it won't um, be all apart. So if the car is actually you're just doing something to tweak it and run, that's fine. But if it's sitting here and you're constantly working on no, it. No, we won't perfect. be. Go ahead and crank it. Okay. Ooh, okay, it's working. So what I want to do is I want to take the fuel feed line because there's three lines coming off of this fuel pump right here. Um, there's a return line, there is the rubber line that feeds it, and then there's the metal line that comes off of it. I want to see if this fuel pump is creating any suction on my finger, because if it is, that means it's it's pumping, and then I can we can hook a fresh fuel line to it and run an auxiliary gas tank off of it without running an electric fuel pump, but I mean, it's a real 50-50 shot, you know, whether this thing's gonna work or not. Got the hose clamp off. So there's two sizes and of, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. <sighs> All right, so there's your fuel pump. You can see I got the, um, the hose clamp off of there. So these two rubber lines, I think the bigger one is your feed line, the smaller one is your return, and then that metal line goes up to the carb. And I wanna take this off so I can see if it's pulling any suction. <sighs> All right, Chris, can you go in there and give it a little blip? Try it again. Do it a little bit longer. Okay, I felt maybe a little bit. Sometimes if you prime them with gas, they'll kind of come back to life a little bit. So we'll try that, we don't know. Time to make a little parts run and gotta get a few things, gotta get some hoses, gotta get a couple fittings. Where's the fuel? Maybe we can find a fuel pump, went to AutoZone, they didn't have one on the shelves, just taken or whatever. So, so. Where's your universal fuel pumps, like your electric ones? Oh, here we go, here we go. Gosh, $62. We bought one on Rock Auto for like 12 bucks. Bro, that's, that's what's called inflation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got everything we needed at Merle's. Uh, we got like a one to four pound fuel pump. We got uh, six foot of three eighths and six foot of five sixteenths fuel line. We also got a uh, fuel filter with some hose clamps. And so I have my fuel line going down to the fuel pump. I primed it, you know, I sucked through it till gas came out, hooked it into our fuel pump uh, on the car hooked a, got a line into the gas tank. We're just gonna see if the fuel pump works. Go ahead. Try it again. One more time. Okay. Nah, it's not doing nothing. Uh, try it one, one more time. No. Okay. You know, it's not working. Um, let's just go ahead and hook up the electric fuel pump because we only got so many more cranks on this battery. So while Chris is putting in our electric fuel pump, I'm going to get down here and change that rubber line from the factory pump to the line going up to the carb. <clears throat> Ugh. Got gas all over me. I'm gonna smell like it now. All right. So, line's on. How's it going up there? Good, we're ready to go up here. Is it, uh, it's in? Yep. All right, I got some test leads that we can hook to the pump, to the battery, because those leads on that pump aren't long enough. <clears throat> you can just kind of pull them out like this, and then this is like magnetic. I like this little jig, okay. it's pretty handy. Positive. Oh, the oh. That one's the negative. oh, is it? The one on the left is negative. Oh, it is, huh? Negative, correct this time. Should see some gas come out that. Oh, yep. All right, now we got some clean gas. All right, we should be able to plug this line back into the car, fill it up, and I don't know. Let's see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Be God's hands now. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it's in God's hands now. All right, tighten this up. Okay. Ugh. Let me go get some brake clean. I mean, we'll just give her a whirl. Hook this fuel pump up. See if it's leaking anywhere. Okay. Want to go ahead and try it? I didn't even need any brake clean. Holy crap. Dude, I'm truly shocked. I've never had one go that easy. I love it. That is so cool. Uh, check and see if it's building oil pressure. There's no, no light. Power steering. We should be in Phoenix by tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. The AC is on. It is on? I put it on auto. Tell me if that the front of that stops turning. Wouldn't that be a trip if the AC worked? Uh, let me get my voltmeter and see if it's charging. Charging. But I wanna switch gears and instead of jacking it up right now and doing the oil and stuff, um, you know, now that it ran and everything, let's just see what, what works. I want to see what works. Do we have headlights? Do we have taillights? Do we have signals? Radio? I don't know. You know, I just really am curious. Okay, try and turn on the headlights, Chris. Okay. We got running light and a headlight. Oh, we have it over here. Haha. <laughs> Turn your brights on. Yep. Okay. We have uh, one running light over there, but the one over here is out. But your headlights work, all four of your headlights. Sweet. Let's go to the back and check the running lights. Uh, turn your, are your headlights on? Yeah. I see it, it's glowing, it's on. You guys see that light in there? Okay. Are you hitting your brake? Yep. Okay. Brake light works. Running light works. Let's check this side. Uh, okay, light is on. Hit your brakes. Wow. <laughs> I'm so amazed. Everything is working. Even the license plate light works. Uh, got the courtesy lights. Are the back ones working? One in the back is working, not both. That, that one's one working. working. That one probably needs a bulb, maybe? Yeah, I'd say that's all it is. <laughs> Ooh, to find 92% of oh my gosh. Oh, what was that? I had to mute it right here because it actually started playing a song from the radio. And I'm not sure how YouTube's copyright thing works and, you know, if they ding me for that. So I just wanted to play it safe. Um, but the automatic antenna works. And we have a driver's side ashtray right here that pulls out. Pretty convenient. Let's see. Sometimes, like, these clocks get stuck. Let's 
sometimes if you jostle them, they'll start working. Oh well. Hmm. Horn works. Does this work? No. See if your blowers come on, like your fan motors and stuff. Uh, oh. Try high. Hi. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't feel anything. Power the, lock works. Try the lock button on that one. All right, yeah, let me pull this door closed. Oh. Yeah, it works. That is so cool. All right, let me try the window. Um, I'm not getting any action. Oh, I got it from this side. Maybe that window button doesn't work. Let's try the back ones. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, does it slide back? Yeah, it slides back. Look no it. way. Here, roll this one back up. <laughs> that's cool. That's too cool. Here, roll your window back up. A little slow, but they just need to be lubricated. That's so sweet. Glove box light working by chance? Yep. I can see it. All right. That's too friggin' cool. Let's try the cigarette light. Oh, um, you need to screw on the side of the dash. It's like, oh. oh, did it pop out? I think I just leave it there real quick. It's it should pop out on its own. Out. It was hot. Ooh, she oh. works. I wonder if the one in the door works. I would be amazed. Uh, that's long enough. Let's try it. Usually if you put them against your face before they get red, you can kind of feel the heat coming off of them, but I can't feel the heat coming off of it. Does that have power seats? Oh yeah. They work. Down. Yeah. Back. Oh, I feel it tilting. Over. Yeah. Go backwards. Yeah. Chris got lucky. They're never this easy. <laughs> you guys know watching this, it is never this easy. But we know for a fact this car was sitting for 15, 20 years. Last time it was registered was... 2008, I the, think, is yeah. what the sticker says. Registered in 08 in New York, yep. But see, just because it was registered in 08 doesn't mean that's the last time it ran. Right. Sometimes people keep up the registration and they don't even drive it. So, you know, it's definitely been 15, 20 years. But he was taking care of it. He was, it was garaged, I can tell. All right, uh, I think we can go ahead now, jack it up, change the oil, and, uh, oh, does it have signals? Comes on in here. Okay. The side isn't blinking, so maybe one of the it's bulbs is It's staying on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, left side's staying on, right side, it works. Next service at 24,659 miles, and we're at 21,763. So it just got serviced. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard to see. Next service date, 24,659, Metro Garage, Washington Street, Binghamton, New York. <laughs> That's so cool. Can I buy this car from you? <laughs> Maybe. What do you want for it? <laughs> what do you want right now? I got cash money. <laughs> so now that we know it runs, we uh, took a little break, went up to the parts store, got some Earl, got some 1540 uh, Rotella diesel oil. We like to run diesel oil in our old cars because of the zinc content, it's for heavy duty use. Got some Marvel oil so we can put in the oil and in the gas. Uh, what is this, the fuel filter? Yeah. Got ourselves a fuel filter, uh, got a see-through plastic, you know, generic universal fuel filter so we can see when it's, you know, see if there's trash in there, what kind of trash is in there. And we got a fuel pump. And I can't believe they had a fuel pump in town. 
just chilling at the parts store. We should be able to put the fuel pump on. I tapped the gas tank earlier and it sounded hollow. I mean, it sounded completely empty. I'll put, a, I'll put the electric fuel pump on it to see if there's any gas in there, see what comes out before we run it through the carburetor and the motor, which we don't want to run any of that gas through the motor. But that gas tank sounded completely hollow to me. You know, maybe we can run the car, you know, without life support. Hopefully. The fries are the best. Got the oil draining from the pan right now. While we're under here, we'll do the oil filter. And Chris is figuring out how the uh, fuel pump is held on there so we can get that going. Oh man, these fuel filters are always on here. Way tighter than they need to be. Filters off of there, I gotta get some rags. I usually pour them full of oil. You don't really have to, but it kind of gives a false reading sometimes when you put oil in and then it says full and then you start it and then you forget that the oil filter sucks up an amount of oil too and you might forget to recheck it and then you're running around with low oil so I don't know it's just always been a habit of mine to fill the oil filter up and then well what's not a habit but is something that you need to do is just put a little dab of oil around that ring there because if you don't it won't seal don't ask me why that's a truth in this world but one time I didn't put oil around the ring and it leaked and it didn't matter how tight I tightened it. The second I took it off and put oil around it, never had a problem. So I don't know what science is behind that, but it's law. All right. I better get this big old oil bin back in my truck before that manager lady sees this. She ain't gonna wanna see this. It says capacity is five quarts on the lipstick. Yeah. <sighs> All right, got the fuel pump out. And it's just kind of like free flowing, free floating. It's not really pumping. I don't really feel anything. Let's try this one. I don't know if you can hear that. You hear that? <laughs> Sucking. That's working. This one is toasted. See, I don't like, well, it should be harder than that. And like, it should be sucking. It's not, this one's junk. Let me see if the gasket is still on this old, the block. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Did the gasket come off on this one? Yes. I hate it when the, ga the gasket always comes off on the block. Yeah. And then you spend the next three days trying to get the gasket off the block. <laughs> so, got the fuel pump. I got the electric fuel pump hooked hooked to the rubber line that goes to the tank. Um, we're gonna hook this pump up to the battery and see if some, anything comes out. Uh, the tank seemed very empty, but if anything is in there, we wanna get it out, see what it looks like, because we wanna put some fresh gas in it. So uh, go ahead and... Ready? Sounds like something. It's pumping. If anything is in the tank, but hopefully, Hopefully there's nothing in the tank. Because if there's nothing in there, we can use it. Like, you know, we'll, we'll put a fuel filter in it, but we can use the tank. Turn off real quick. Okay. The pickup sock in the uh, tank isn't plugged because I'm pulling through it. Ugh. Plug it back in. Here, pretty quick. You got lucky, tank's dry. Uh, we're gonna take these jack stands out, lay it on the ground, top off the oil, and uh, we're gonna run the car on the electric fuel pump until it pumps from the tank. And then once it pumps from the tank and I start seeing fuel come out, the mechanical pump will switch and I'll plumb in the mechanical pump. Are you out of the way? I'm gonna let this down. Because we only have so many cranks on that battery. Um, So I just don't want to crank the battery out trying to get fuel from the back of this 30,000 foot car. About half of it, it'll be good. Marvel Mystery Oil is a true mystery. 
It is truly a mystery. This is the most best stuff I've ever used. It smells good. If it didn't kill you, I'd drink it. Let's see how they work these safety t tanks. How do they do this? You just put this on the edge of the tank and it pushes. Oh, I think, I remember last time, oh, you gotta push it in and then, and then call Gavin Newsom and ask him if it's okay. All right, Chris, uh, go ahead and uh, crank it. Oh, all right, stop. All right, yep, it, it's pumping gas. Yeah, I saw it coming all out the bottom. <clears throat> There's the new fuel pump with the metal fuel line going to the carb, the return line, the feed line, and I have a fuel filter pre-pump. Uh, so uh, go ahead, Chris, crank it. Well, oh, she's pumping. All right, she's pumping. <sighs> Go ahead. Man, that runs so good. I cannot believe that. All right, give her a little bit of the beans. Hit the brake. Do you have pedal? Yeah, you got pedal? Okay, go ahead and try and put it in gear. Let me see if it goes in gear. Oh, wow, the brakes are working mighty fine. Let's go ahead and shut this. Uh, go ahead and uh, turn the air conditioner off. Yeah. On. The air conditioner's working. I wonder if it's blowing cold. Well, the fans didn't work, I remember that, so. Well, actually, I can put my hand on the uh, low low side, and if the low side is cold and the high side is hot, then you know that it's actually working, but I can't tell. Go ahead and shut it off just for safety. Uh, sometimes these have pressure switches. When the Freon gets low, the compressor won't work. Sometimes these old systems, they didn't have pressure switches, so it'll just turn with no Freon, and you don't want that. was doing but it was just it hanging out emissions, thing on it, emissions. emissions look at how big this car is I never even noticed this it has two hood latches it has two hood latches usually there's one in the center this one has two I think we should drive it to quick trip so we can air up the tires because we got we got no way to air the tires up nothing all right oh hold on We don't have these tight, so it might not be getting a good connection. Um, I want to see if it's charging, though. Ah, we're not getting a good connection right here. There we go. 13.2. See that? It says 13.2. 13.3. It's charging. All right. I don't see anything leaking. I don't see any fuel, I don't see any water. First time in 20 years. Power steering looks to be working. Okay. Well, it stops on a dime. All right, I'll put you guys right here. to quick trip um, it's very busy I'm trying to find the 
tire machine. I gotta air these tires up. I don't got a compressor over here. This, oh my gosh, this place is way too busy. Where the heck is the tire machine? Oh. Here's the air. She made it, she gets the gears. Okay. I think it's taken. Oh, these tires are dry rotted. These things could blow at any minute. I got the air conditioner on. Uh, remember how the compressor turned on? The blower motors weren't working at first, but they are now. Uh, but I don't think it's got any refrigerant in it because it's, it's blowing hot air. So probably want to turn that off. You don't want to, um, you don't want to hurt the compressor, but I just wanted to see if it, if it worked. 1969 Cadillac Eldorado, vinyl roof, 472. Hasn't ran, hasn't drove in 20 years. And we got her to run, got her to drive, and stop. And what more could you ask for, man? That's what I'm saying. You know? Next thing to do is get a title. I, this didn't, we don't even got a title, registration, insurance, we ain't got nothing. I, we weren't even supposed to be on the road doing nothing. That was totally, shit, don't do don't that. Don't do that. Hopefully the audio and the video quality is a little better. I got a better camera. I actually got some legitimate audio equipment so the engines don't sound like they're running underwater. That's what people commented, really? that it sounded like they're... Sound like they're underwater? Some guy said it sounds like a water pump running underwater. <laughs> <laughs> so I got better audio equipment, I got a better camera, so hopefully that made the video better for you guys. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.